my hide oh my welcome back everyone to three minute board games it's me again stephanie who knew <gasps> Aren't you delighted? I'm delighted. I'm slightly erratic. It's quite late. Um, I'm not sure how much time there'll be between videos, but for me it's been about five minutes of frantically trying to find all the squishy pink Everdell berries that someone scattered across the floor of the games room. <laughs> it's fine. It can't affect game balance that much, can it? But we're not here to talk about Everdell and who lost all of the squishy berry pieces today. Today we are continuing my games I have been dreaming of playing list with the 10 new hotness that I have never played before but I'm very keen to try. For a bit of context if you're jumping into this one you haven't seen the previous one and you're one of our new subscribers who's never seen this strange woman before my name is Stephanie I'm Jay's partner I am the mother of the most beautiful child in the world and and I have not had a lot of spare time for gaming recently, what with parenting a toddler, working a day job, and running for parliament, sadly unsuccessfully. What can I say? I really like trying to convince an audience that my opinions are correct and they should support me. Have I mentioned we have a Patreon? So with two technical exceptions, all of these games are brand new to me. I am judging them not on whether they are good games, not on whether I enjoy playing them, because I don't know. I'm going on hype from Jay, aesthetics, personal taste, and I don't know, they just look neat. So with that in mind, take these very uninformed opinions as exactly what they are. And if you have any recommendations of games you think I should try now that I have so much spare time on my hands, drop them in the comments below. Azul, Queen's Garden. So let's get the two technically new entries out of the way, starting with Azul, Queen's Garden. I have played original Azul a heck of a lot. It is one of my favorite games. In a two-player game, I can almost regularly beat Jay at it, which is very fun. Azul Master Chocolatier is original Azul, but tastier. Summer Pavilion, I quite like. Stained Glass of Sintra did not grab me. That's how it goes sometimes. Queen's Garden, looks pretty and satisfying and I love the pattern making and the strategy but also the tactics but also the aesthetics yeah this is one I am definitely looking forward to waterfall park behold my amazing photoshop skills Chinatown is an incredibly fun game with a really problematic theme waterfall park is the mechanics of Chinatown without being Chinatown. And I think that is well overdue. Historical themes in board games can be amazing and they can be well executed. And when they're done well, they are actually critical and central to the gameplay and to the experience of the game. Chinatown is a really, really good cut and thrust, strategic bartering, territory grabbing game that doesn't really need to be leaning into some stereotypes about certain groups of migrants. The cover art says it all. So I'm really looking forward to Waterfall Park so I can actually recommend the game to people without having to say, okay, look, I know this sounds bad, but. Planet Unknown. Planet Unknown. You had me at, it's a jigsaw puzzle terraforming game with a lazy Susan in the middle of the table. Cues and cues. Now let's get to the games that are genuinely new to me. Again with a slight asterisk. Cues and cues initially excited me because I had, at the time I saw it, been playing a lot of a mobile game where you have to distinguish like one slightly off shade amidst a wall of identical colors. Really testing your visual acuity and screen brightness. But hues and cues isn't just about identifying different shades of color. It's also about describing them. So it hits me right in my word nerd brain, combining both, can I describe something really, really clearly? And can I adjust my description based on the people I'm playing with to either help or hinder them in identifying what color I'm talking about? It's just too much fun. Art Society. Here's a short list of board games I already know I like. Atelier, Museum, Modern Art, 
castles of Mad King Ludwig. And now you're telling me that there is a game where I can bid on gorgeous works of art and also gain victory points by arranging them in the most pleasing way on my gallery wall? You had me at bonjour! Also, this double layered front cover is just beautiful. Jurassic Park. If you watched my previous video, you may be thinking to yourself, oh look, another Ravensburger game based on a movie Stephanie really, 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 really likes. Depending on the day of the week you ask me, Jurassic Park is always somewhere in my top two movies of all time. I love it. I love it so much that I love the sequels. I am for Jurassic World the same way I am for Prometheus because I don't have taste when it comes to the IPs I love. But it's a Jurassic Park game by Ravensburger who didn't do me wrong when it came to Jaws so they can't f*** this one up, right? If they can, don't let me know in the comments. I just need to find out for myself. The Thing in fiction at Outpost 31. Another one of the YouTube rabbit holes I've fallen down recently, when it's late at night, I've been at a candidates meeting, I've been asked once again whether we really need to do anything about climate change. Yes. I just needed some brain candy. So I have been watching a lot of reviews, retrospectives, and newbies first time watching the Thing. It's just so good. It's such a great movie. It's so creepy. It's got such a banging cast. It's got such a banger bull cast. And it also taps into that love of kind of eldritch, unknown things man was not meant to see, but women can probably handle just fine science fiction. The paranoia, the questioning, the scene with the blood tests. I'm just hoping that this will in some way bring that all to life for me. Lanterns, the Harvest Festival. I love a pretty puzzly game and this one seems to tick all the right boxes. Also, there's a lot of CG'd soothing music floating lantern videos on YouTube that we occasionally use to calm the toddler down when it's 10 p.m. and she absolutely will not sleep. So it's, you know, occupying a very special place in my brain as well. Steam up. I have to start by giving a shout out to Meeple University. I am pretty sure it was Stella who I first saw talking about this on the social media platform, which shall not be named. And as soon as I heard about it, I wanted it. Just so beautiful such a cute idea, so aesthetically pleasing, and that was before I found out that you can get a first player marker shaped like a bow, and it is squishy, and it's hidden somewhere in our house right now because the toddler keeps getting her hands on it, and she will bite it. I mean, I would bite it. Also, I have to shout out the wee pig chef on the back of the box because pig is also my Chinese zodiac sign. Stardew Valley, the board game. I have played a lot of Stardew Valley, but not recently. It's really one of those games where I have to get into the flow of my tasks and my routine, and as soon as I don't play it for a day or two, I completely forget what I am doing, why I have so much cheese, and who I'm trying to fall in love with this week. I mean, that's also my real life. Stardew Valley the board game was one that I knew I wanted as soon as I understood it as a concept. So I'm really excited to crack it out and see if it can give me something of that charming, mildly anti-capitalist farming vibe without also feeling like an extra job. So there we go, 10 games that are new to me, if only on a technicality, but who needs an excuse to play good board games? If you have liked my videos and seeing this face back on the channel, Please do like those videos, consider subscribing if you're not subscribed, and why not mosey on over to our Patreon to support more of our work and assume that I had a big rant about the value of labor under capitalism here. There's a couple more videos that I have kind of knocking about in this head of mine, including covering some really old school board games that I've been collecting, and a little bit of a discussion about 
politics and board games, which I'm sure will go down really, really well and not stir up any fights in the comments. If there are any games that I have absolutely missed, what was I thinking, please do let me know. And be sure to leave comments on other videos telling Jay how much you have enjoyed seeing me back on the channel because he loves reading those comments. He really does. Until next time, I have been the amazing Stephanie. This has been 3 Minute Board Games. This video has not been three minutes long, but you know how those ones go. Until next time, when I manage to sneak an evening in the game shed. Kakite ano. Let's start that again now that I remember which game I'm talking about.